Hey guys, today I'm taking a look at the Packard Bell Force 101 motherboard. Um, if you watched my video about voiding the warranty on the all-original Packard Bell, that's what this is from. And we discovered it has this Dallas RTC chip, which is no longer good. And unfortunately, they soldered it to the motherboard, so uh, we're going to replace this with a socketed uh, newer Dallas chip. So, I've already got my soldering iron in the background warmed up. I set it to about 350 degrees and first thing I'm going to do is flip this board over and we'll just suck the solder off the pins as best we can. And this is my first time recording any kind of soldering work on camera so bear with me here. I'm using a chintzy tripod that's going to be a little bit shaky but just double check. So these pins here or what we're going to be working on and the way I do it is I've got one of these jobs um, some of you are probably going to be saying oh you'll lift the solder pads off the PCB or whatever but I've been using this a lot I've never had that issue so to each their own on that um, so I got this warmed up let's go ahead and dive in here and see what we can get and I'll see if I can do this without blocking the view of the camera here. I might need to switch to a smaller tip. This one's kind of big. But no, that's working out pretty good. Sometimes it helps to have a larger tip than you think you need just for the ability to transfer heat a lot faster. Uh, this one doesn't want to melt. You can kind of see the solder change color a little bit, kind of like get like a little shimmer action going on. That's how you know it's melted. I'm just applying moderate force to the pin here to try and get good heat transfer. And every once in a while I'll dip it into my brass tip cleaning basket and uh, keep that tip nice and shiny. Yeah, this one looks a little rough so we're going to do that again. That's a lot better. And basically you just go through each one of these pins and then... Uh, that's not going to be enough to get it to fall out, so I'll show you what my step two part of this is. It's kind of a two-step process. And this is really taking a lot of heat to melt this, which you... It's not unusual for this old solder. One thing you can do if you really get stuck is just add some new solder to it and it'll soften right up and melt no problem. And I think I'm actually going to do that for these because they are being stubborn. So I've got just uh, some Radio Shack 6040 rosin core, it's all you need. Just a little bit is all it takes to get that good mixed in there and then you can just suck all of it right back out. See now that's a clean hole there. That's perfect. So what we'll do is just repeat that process for all the rest of these. Just 
Just a tiny little smidge. Suck it right out, got a clean hole. So actually, because that's working so well, I'm going to go back to the first two and just do that same process. See if we can't get all of these holes nice and clean. Insert sexual joke wherever you like. This one pin here, some of these take a lot of heat. Looks like I missed it there. There we go. That's shaping up beautiful. Let's clean our tip again. This is really requiring a long hold time here to get the heat soaking in. Once you're there, it's coming out nice and clean. Well, this one's going right through. I have to say, this is one of the cleanest desoldering tasks I've ever done. Maybe I'm just getting enough experience to act like I know what I'm doing. It also helps tremendously to have a good soldering station. I'm using the OU INT 968A Plus. Picked that up from my local micro center for, I think they're going for around 280 or 290, something like that. Which, for the one off hobbyist solder, probably not worth that kind of investment, but I do enough rework jobs that it seemed like it was worth it, and I'm. Uh, very happy with this unit. Feels like I'm starting to get some solder jammed up in my little sucker here. Alright, so that's one whole side done. We're going to move to the other side now. Stop here and get the solder cleaned out of the end of the sucker. Look at this. That giant chunk was stuck up inside there. So yeah, to anyone who says using these things is dangerous, I say you're doing it wrong because I have great results with them. I went and bought one of those desoldering irons that has 
like a hollow tip you stick right over the pin and it's got a hand squeegee bulb on top of it to suck air that thing never got hot enough to melt butter so the old uh, spring-loaded sucker it is So through here, there's a lot of circuit traces right next to these, and I'm just trying to angle the tip to avoid holding that directly over those traces, because sometimes you can burn through them a little bit. That wasn't a very good hit right there. Let's try that one again. But the cleaner you can get the holes through this part, the easier the next step's going to be. This one's really being stubborn. There we go. That got it. And I skipped one somehow, so let's back up. Perfect. This is good enough. It's just about going to fall out under its own weight. Last two here. So that's all we need with the soldering iron for the moment. I'm going to go ahead and turn that part off. Just make sure we didn't skip anything. Doesn't look like we did. Now there's still just trace amounts of solder holding it in there, so it's not going to just fall out. But during the next step, it should. So I'll show you real quick. Here's my rework station. And this, here's where our soldering iron sits. There's the brass I used to clean the tip. And we have all these different soldering tips we can choose from. Uh, solder spool, if that's what you like to use. Um, this tip here is what we're going to use next. So this is the heat gun. And if I can get this to focus... There you go. You can kind of see how this is going to blow hot air out of the ridges on either side of this. And uh, let's see if I can find the part number on here. It's upside down, but that's a 1259 tip. And you can find those on eBay for, I think they run about 20 bucks, but they fit any standard heat gun. Um... And it's designed for something other than what I'm using it for, but I checked the dimensions and it fits perfectly for doing these RTC chips. So, <clears throat> what we'll do now is turn on the heat gun. I've got it on max airflow. 
and we're going to crank the temperature up to 350, same as we used for the soldering iron. And it shows you the actual temp compared to your set temp. And we're there. So basically all you do is hold it down over those pins and uh, you might need a pry tool on the bottom just to get a little bit of downforce to pop that chip out of there. So that's what I've got and then uh, we just hold this down directly over those pins. It's going to melt the solder for all of those pins simultaneously and only those pins and it's going to drop right out of there after a few seconds. And you can really get it close up tight to that board and focus the heat where you need it. And it's already dropping out. Right there we go. There it is. So I know the camera got a little crappy there. But there's our RTC, all the pins look nice and clean, not that it matters, we're throwing it away. And here you can see our holes, beautiful, no damage to anything. We've got all these pins right here, no damage to those, no damage to anything else around here, still a little bit warm. So, by far the cleanest method I've ever seen for doing this. Let's check the top side here. So you can see up here is where it went. Uh, looks like there might have been some flux or something on the board that got melted. Doesn't hurt anything. We'll clean this up with some isopropyl alcohol. Try and clean these holes a little bit better so that we can get the new chip to just, or actually the new socket to drop right in. Add some solder and we're done. So uh, I'll get this cleaned up and uh, we'll continue on. All right, just want to show you guys real quick what I'm doing to clean up these holes a little bit. There's very little that needs to be done, but uh, I've switched to a finer tip on the soldering iron, which, there you go, just a little pencil tip, it'll fit down in those holes a little bit easier, and like there's this one on the end that's got a little bit of solder creeping into it, I'm just going to hold that on there, keep using the sucker, clean it right out. Got another one here, it's a little bit crummy. And really just melting the solder, it'll kind of flow around the, the hole there and clean out the center of it on its own. So very easy to do. Just takes a second. It's not listing lifting any pads off the board.
Well, that one on the corner there doesn't look perfect, but it's plenty open enough to get the new pin to slide down through there. Now, one thing a bit unusual on this one compared to other ones I've done is if you notice, uh, this the PCB doesn't have holes going through all the way across here. They're, they're just not there. So if we look at our socket here, this has pins that go all the way down, if it will focus. You know, let me put the soldering iron back. We're done with that for now. So, yeah, we're going to have to remove some of these pins so that we can get this thing to fit down in the board. And uh, the only thing we want to pay attention to is there's a notch on the end right here where my fingernail is. And that's going to line up with a marking on the circuit board right here at the end of my finger. So that's how you kind of know where pin one is. So we just want to maintain that orientation. Pull the pins out we don't need. It'll drop right through there. Flip it over. Put some new solder on it. Slap the new RTC in. This job's done. So the way I get these pins out is I've discovered you can use like needle nose pliers and just push them up. Uh, so the first one we want to remove is this one here. So I've just grabbed the bottom of the pin with my needle nose pliers and I'm going to try and push it up. You can see that is lifting up out of the contain the holder here where the pin just fell out into my hand. So try and get the better view on camera here. So there's one missing pin. Removes nice and easy. Doesn't take a lot of force. If it does, maybe reevaluate your um, your socket may be designed differently where it's not as easy to do this. I don't know, but it should, they should just push right out with minimal effort very quickly. And just so that that one side just slid right through the, the board. Super easy, no force at all, just gravity. So we're going to check the other side, remove those pins that we don't need. Super easy. Oh, and that one. Or if you want to be lazy, you can just bend the pins out of the way, but then you run a risk of shorting them against something else. Or if you've got some edge cutters, I suppose you could just snip them off. Doesn't really matter. Just got to get them out of the way one way or another. So that should be all the unnecessary pins. Oh, it looks like I bent one with my hand. They're very, very thin, easy to bend, so just be careful. And it just fell right through, no force needed whatsoever, which means you've got nice clean holes. Um, I haven't wiped it down with any alcohol yet. You can still see some residue with something, so I'm going to do that. And then we'll find something to secure it into place. Normally I'll take another object, whatever I have sitting on the desk, and just set it underneath the socket and kind of wedge it in between the table and that socket upside down so that it holds it nice and flush with the board so that when we apply the new solder on the back here it doesn't get crooked or anything. So I'm gonna pause the camera again, clean this up, and we'll finish this. All right, we're all cleaned up and prepared for soldering. 
Uh, what I've done is I have a Thermaltake power supply tester. It was the perfect size to fit under there and hold the socket in place. And now we're just going to solder it together. I'm still using the fine tip here, the pencil tip, because we're not going to need a lot of heat. Um, yeah, it really doesn't want to focus today, but you get the idea. Dab in the uh, brass cleaning pad there, make sure we're good to go. Got my um, trusty Radio Shack solder. And it should go very quick from here on out. So I'm waiting for the solder iron to heat the pin and I'm applying the solder to the pin, not the solder iron itself. That's how you know you're going to get a nice secure connection. There's the first one down. Now I don't really ever use flux. I'm sure that might make this process go a little faster and easier. But I do have some, I don't know. If you guys think it's worth using, let me know. But I I don't really have any issues just doing this hardcore without it. Unless maybe I'm working on a HP server board doing a recap job and some of those will have massive thick circuit traces like this one here on the edge that you got to solder through that might be a, a, a time to use some flux and really help that solder get in there That one went real quick. Some of these, for whatever reason, just seem to go a lot faster than others. So that whole side's done already. Go to the other one. didn't seem like it cooled properly so it doesn't hurt to go back and remelt it and just make sure it's a nice good solid joint And you can let it sit with the iron in the melted solder for another second or two just to make sure it's all nice and bonded well. And so here this one's being stubborn. We had an issue with that one desoldering it as well. But a little bit of persistence, you'll get it done. Okay, beautiful. I'll turn it over here, check and just make sure that we did actually get it in there nice and flat. 
looks like we did. That is by far the best job I've done yet. So now, got a couple new RTC chips here. And I don't know offhand how to do it, but uh, I think it's this number on the end here. You can decode that to figure out when it was manufactured. I'm reasonably confident these were made just a year or two ago. So uh, you can see it's got a couple pins missing. Yeah, there it goes. So should only fit one way. It's got this corner notched for pin one, and that's going to go with the notch up here. I'm looking on the back side, there is actually one pin that doesn't connect to anything. Hopefully that's not an issue. Uh, it's the only pin that doesn't go to anything. So we're just going to press it down in and there she sits. Should work. So I got to get this computer reassembled. That's going to be a different video. Um, so stay, stay tuned if you want to see the follow-up and, and find out whether or not this was a success, uh, successful repair. Thanks for watching.